Today I'm continuing to talk about dating during the age of coronavirus because I could not resist going over this article. This is from a dating blog from this British chick who's 40 and still single. She had a long-term relationship that didn't work out in her 30s and now she's back on the dating market. And I kind of hate read it and I also read it because I try to keep in touch with the things that single women dating are writing about. So let's find out what are these reasons. If you're single and especially if you also live alone, these are possibly the strangest, most difficult times of all. Gone is your social life. Gone is any form of human interaction. Gone is any reason to get dressed, wash, or even get out of bed. Life is on pause and it's fucking shit. Shit for everyone, agree, but in many ways, particularly shit for single people. Here are 10 reasons why. Tell me about it, girl. You know, the rest of us lost our social lives too. Just because you live with someone, that's not a social life. That is not your activities that connect you to the community. You're not a special snowflake there. Number one, you don't get any physical contact at all. We all need to be touched. Now, this is one thing on the list that I will grant her is legit. This is one of the reasons why I've been very critical of people who just say that we have to do this lockdown and nothing else matters because people's lives are at stake. And I'm like, sure, but there are a lot of really lonely people out there, people who are by themselves who normally rely on the casual human interactions they get by going to the grocery store, by going to a yoga class, by participating in some activity, interactions they are now deprived of. We are social creatures and not just social like, let's have a Zoom call. Social like, we need to be hugged. We need to be touched. Oxytocin. It's a thing. Number two, no sex. So this chick writes this blog in the third person. Okay, for Lucy, it wasn't really on the table all that much anyway, but at least it was there as a possibility. The chance that maybe one day a cute guy would come along who wouldn't be a dick or send a dick and she'd finally get to remember what a real life penis looks like in the flesh. But now, nothing. Not a zip. Zilch. No possibility of any action at all. Not even an ill-advised hookup with an ex or part-time fuck buddy because no matter which way you slice it, Lucy doesn't think the police will accept I needed to get laid as a necessary journey. And to add insult to injury, there are couples everywhere. Couples holding hands in the park, couples on telly, couples on social media who live together and get to have sex whenever they want, even at 2 p.m. on a Wednesday while the boring conference call is muted. Meanwhile, Lucy's reduced to lusting after fellow joggers and dreaming of one day managing to get a Tesco delivery slot just so a man will come and knock on her door. Like, I get it. Not having sex sucks. But in her case, as she said, she wasn't having sex really anyway. So maybe this is a great time to reflect on why you weren't having sex. And I don't think it's because all men are dicks. If every man that you date is a dick, you might want to look at the common denominator, sweetie. Number three, you look like shit. With no job to get dressed for and no one at home to see her, Lucy has immediately devolved into Neanderthal levels of disarray. Gone is the polish, the poise, the neatly styled hair and carefully applied makeup. She lives alone, so there's no point in getting dressed. Pajamas are much more comfy anyway. Doesn't matter if she smells like a landfill site. No one's around to notice. Hair greasier than a McDonald's kitchen? Until her scalp gets itchier than a bad case of thrush. Who cares? I mean, I get it, but speaking from my personal experience living with my husband and we're both working from home, we've definitely gone a few days where both of us didn't shower. It's not just you, sweetie. You're not a special snowflake for being single and hanging around in your pajamas and not showering. We're all doing it. Four, you don't have anyone to talk to. Couples can talk to each other. Parents can talk to their kids. But when you live alone under lockdown, you have no one. No one to chat to about your day. No one to express your thoughts and fears to. No one to calm your anxiety and tell you everything is going to be okay. Of course, you can do Zoom chats or FaceTime, but they're not the same. First, Lucy has to see herself in the chat window, and it's bad enough looking like a troll doll that fell behind a radiator without having to face that horror every time she wants to talk to a friend. Second, people on video chat rarely give her their full attention. They have half an eye on the TV, or they're being assaulted by a feral four-year-old, or they're trying not to burn their dinner. And who can blame them for being distracted? It's not like Lucy has anything interesting to say these days anyway. What the fuck do you have to talk about if nothing is happening and you're not allowed to leave the house? Guess what? I cleaned the kitchen today. Have you heard there's a pandemic on? Riveting stuff. Wow, this section said so much. I get what she's saying. It's hard if you live alone and you don't have someone when you wake up, when you go to bed, throughout the day, like face to face. But people talked on the phone before video chat existed. You didn't have to go into this weird, distracted thing where you have to look at yourself. But the best part of this is where she talks about how she has nothing to say because she can't leave the house, which just goes to show you that she has nothing interesting going on for herself in her life. How about talking about a book you read or some project you took up? Maybe you're knitting or you're learning to bake bread, something. Number five. Five, you're gaining weight. If you're stuck at home alone all day, what else is there to do but eat? You need treats to break up the day and cheer yourself up, right? It's healthy. Or it would be if it weren't for the fact that Lucy's activity levels have gone from 10,000 steps a day plus the gym 
to a handful of trips to the kettle and a slow shuffle around the block on the rare occasions that she can be bothered to put on shoes. Not that gaining weight would be a disaster. After all, now that Lucy's realized she's going to be single forever, there's nothing wrong with allowing her body to morph into comfortable chubbery. Or there wouldn't be, if it weren't for all of social media haughtily informing her that she should be using this time to get end of lockdown body ready. Instagram hit workouts, Twitter diet plans, the government's one hour of prescribed exercise. Why can't they just leave her alone to eat Nutella out of the jar in peace? Again, she's not even exercising, so she can't even talk about her exercise routine when she talks to people on Zoom. And exercise is a perfect answer to the question, what else is there to do but eat? But sounds like this chick just wants to do exactly what is happening in this chiff here and stuff her face with cake. Number six, you're doing nothing and being shamed for it. When social media isn't making Lucy feel shit for slowly morphing into a potato, it's busy making her feel shit for not improving herself in other ways. Take up an instrument, enthuses Instagram. Learn a language, hoots the Duolingo owl. Write a novel, Shakespeare wrote King Lear. Families with kids don't need to worry about this pressure. They're already heroes just for managing not to kill their children after three weeks being locked up with them. But if you're single and living alone, there's no excuse. You shouldn't be vegging out in front of Tiger King or lying in bed scrolling Twitter all day. You should be Marie condoing your cupboards or baking cakes to distribute to your neighbors and shame on you if you're not. Well, you were just bitching in the other paragraph about having nothing interesting to share when you talk to people on Zoom, and yet you refuse to do anything that would give you anything to talk about, like learn a language or take up an instrument. And yeah, parents have kids to take care of. That is their job, that is their calling, that is a major part of their lives. So they don't have to do anything else. They made a choice to raise human beings and they're doing it. What the hell are you doing? Get a project, create something, learn something. You'll feel better. It'll take your mind off things and you will have something to say in a conversation besides, I scroll on Twitter all day and I haven't showered in five days. How are you doing? Number seven, dating apps are full of bored people. If you're single, you might think now is a perfect time for her to go back on the apps. Single people stuck home alone are realizing how nice it would be to have someone. Everyone has plenty of time to devote to chatting, so it'll be easy. Maybe Lucy can't meet someone face to face right now, but she can definitely line up a string of potential future husbands, ready to meet them the second she's let out of the house, right? Wrong. Because of course the men on dating apps are just the same as they ever were, still mostly a depressing mix of illiterate, incoherent, obnoxious, or obscene, with the added bonus of a newly minted influx of bored time wasters who are only online because they can no longer be down the pub with their mates. While Lucy may have an idyllic fantasy of matching with a Ryan Gosling lookalike who falls for her over Skype before they eventually leap into each other's arms, in an emotional first meeting as soon as lockdown ends, she knows that's not going to happen. The unfortunate truth is that most men on dating apps can't keep a conversation going for three sentences, let alone three weeks. And even those that can will either go back to their wives and girlfriends or sleazily proposition you for sex the second the rules are eased. Give me a break. Like, she's acting like this is men. This is women too. I have a friend who is on the dating apps during this whole thing, and it's worse than ever because women use dating apps to get attention from men to make themselves feel better, and they often have no intention of ever meeting up. They'll message with you for a bit until they get bored and move on. They may even agree to meet up and then still ghost you. So now you have a bunch of women and you can see it in their profiles like, well, I'm bored, so guess I'll get on this app. Like they won't even try to hide it. I'm like, yes, tell me more. You sound like my perfect match. You can get a few clues from this section as to why she has trouble finding a man based on the resentful way she has described the men she encounters on dating apps. Nothing to do with her. It's all everyone one else's fault. Number eight, virtual dating in the seventh circle of hell. Even if you do manage to match with someone and get chatting, virtual dating is no better than IRL dating ever was. You'd think it'd be easy. You don't need to commit to a specific time. Everyone is free all day. You don't even have to pick a pub. And yet people still can't manage to commit to a date. They still cancel at the last minute. And that's even more fucking infuriating than normal because you bother to wash and change out of your pajamas for no fucking reason whatsoever. But a cancellation might be better than actually having a FaceTime date because even with hair and makeup reapplied, absolutely no one looks good on that hideous wide angle selfie camera. And the conversation is bound to be shit because no one has anything to talk about and everyone is far too fucking depressed. Yeah, because no one else could possibly have anything interesting to say just because you don't, because you refuse to exercise or do anything with your time. Far better to just give up and say, fuck this, I'm out. But if you try to do that, the FOMO will get you. Tales of lockdown meet cutes are already doing the rounds of the internet, giving people false hope of the possibility of finding love in the time of coronavirus. Go on, whispers the FOMO demon in your ear. Fire up Bumble one more time. If you don't, you might miss your chance. Well, fuck you, FOMO demon. These stories 
probably aren't even true. Girl, what do you want? This is your option. Do the virtual dating, don't do the virtual dating. I have read your blog for a while and you were doing a real shit job with the dating before coronavirus hit. So this doesn't seem like much different for you. Number nine, lockdown makes you realize everyone is a dick. For a long time, Lucy dreamed of meeting some wonderful man who would make her laugh and be kind and generous and thoughtful. And then lockdown happened and she realized that was going to be impossible because everyone is a cunt. From the toilet paper stockpilers to the selfish twats sunbathing in the park to her friends who never call, it turns out that actually people are the worst and there's no point even trying to meet a nice one because there literally aren't any left. Yeah, like I said, if everyone that you encounter is a cunt, then the common denominator is you. So look in the mirror, honey. You want to meet a man who will make you laugh, who's kind, generous, and thoughtful? How about you be those things? Because, you know, I could be wrong. This could all be for the blog. And in real life, you are just this amazing, generous, thoughtful person. And all your friends just love you and just think you're awesome. But I would put good money on that not being the case. And number 10, lockdown gives you a depressing vision of the future. So where does this leave her? Home alone, no boyfriend, no apps, no dating, just Lucy and her laptop or TV in her fridge. Not dissimilar, in fact, to how her life has pretty much been for the last five years and probably exactly how it will be for the next 40 if she makes it that far. Totally not depressing. Lockdown is like a crystal ball into her future. Yes, it will end for now and she'll go back to work in the pub, but eventually, in a few years time, this is exactly where she'll be. Single, alone, living in the same flat, just with saggier boobs and more gray hair. But would that really be so terrible? Yes, it would be lovely to have someone, but if lockdown has taught Lucy anything positive, it's that she's actually really good at being single. She's used to her own company, comfortable in her own space, easily able to occupy her time, and completely independent. She might be an extrovert, but it turns out she's quite good at being an introvert too. Turns out people are much less annoying when they're kept at a distance. Yeah, you spent the past few years alone, so I hope you're good at it. And on the flip side of that, that's probably one of the reasons why you have a hard time finding someone, because you're so unwilling to make any sort of compromises or sacrifices to your own lifestyle. I read several posts where she made comments about the guys that she met with and something about them that would interfere with her life. Like he lived in this one area and she hoped he wouldn't ask her to move where he lived because ugh. Maybe in the future I will make another video that talks about some other posts that she's done. But for now, this is where I leave you. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And I hope to have more content for you very soon.